Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I'm Irene and today I'll show you how to make gorgeous high-end looking decorations from fabric. So, let's get started! First, I'll make some grapes. I've bought four grapes from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use it as a base. I'm cutting small circles of purple velvet about 2 inches in diameter to cover the grapes. I'm taking a fabric circle, bending the edge so that the fabric doesn't fray and gather it on a thread along the edge. Then I'm pulling the thread a little to make kind of little bag, covering a grape with this bag and tightening the thread. You want to cover the whole bunch like this. Actually, you don't need any four grapes to make this, you can make it yourself by stuffing the resulting bags with some hollow fiber and then collecting the resulting bubbles into a bunch. But if you use a base, you don't have to worry about that grape's location, size of the grapes, so I think it's a bit easier to have it. There were 35 or 36 grapes in my bunch in case you want to make a bunch all by yourself. After this, I'm decorating the grapes with tendrils. I'm taking a thin wire about 7 inches long, I'm winding it over a pan to make a kind of a spring. I'm bending it a little to make it a little bit more irregular and then covering it with some golden gimp. You can use some golden thread or spray paint the wire gold. Then I'm bending the upper tip of the tendril to make a loop and attaching it to the bunch. I made two tendrils like that. All that is left to do is to decorate the twig. Here I wanted to make a piece of stem thicker than the main stem of the bunch, but I didn't find anything for this purpose, so I'm taking a piece of wire and cutting some soft pipe of suitable diameter to make this. It turned out just what I needed. After everything is ready, I'm wrapping the resulting stem of the bunch with a thin satin ribbon of suitable color. As you can see, these grapes are quite easy to make and are looking really nice. It will look great over a Christmas tree, as an ornament or on a beautiful dish in some fall arrangement. You can make several branches in purple and green for this purpose. For the next ornament you'll need some base. Here I'm using a piece of polystyrene, this is insulation material, it's sold at some hardware stores and is very cheap. I'm drawing here something resembling a fig or an onion, <laughs> but in fact it's going to be a fig. Mine is about 3 inches. Since my sheet of polystyrene is rather thin, I'm hot gluing the two layers together. And then I'm beginning to cut the fig. First, I'm cutting off the excess along the contour. Then I'm cutting off some excess thickness and starting to round off the back. First, I'm cutting the bottom along the contour and then I'm making the fig thinner to the tip. I'm tapering it evenly as if sharpening a pencil. And finally, I'm rounding everything, trying to cut off every sharp edge. 
After that, I'm drawing the seeds over the flat side of the fruit. Best is to look at a fig picture and try to recreate it. I'm going to make this seeds part a bit deeper, so I'm cutting along the contour with a box knife and then carving off pieces of polystyrene piece by piece. This will make a nice uneven texture. In the very center I'm making a slight indentation about half an inch in diameter. And I still have pen marks along the edge, so I'm cutting them off as pen marks will be visible through thin fabric. Next I'm going to trace the back side of the fruit. I'm taking a strong thread, putting it over the fruit so that the thread goes from the fig tip to the bottom and pulling it tight. The thread is cutting into the polystyrene a little and is making a mark over it, so I'm able to outline this mark with a pen. I'm dividing the entire base into sections like this. I've got seven sections here, each one about half an inch in the widest part. In the end, I'm cutting the base with a box knife along all the markings to a depth of about 5 mm. I'm going to tuck fabric into these slots later. I'm also cutting along the contour over the flat part of the fruit about 2-3 mm from the edge. Here I'm holding the knife at a 45 degree angle to the surface of the fruit so as not to cut off the edge but to make a slot. And I'm also cutting along the contour of the seeds middle. To make the fig skin I'm going to be using two shades of purple velvet, one lighter and one darker. I think it looks a bit more interesting but you can use only one color as well. So, now the fun part begins. I'm using a glue stick to cover one of the sections. Then I'm attaching fabric here and gently pushing the fabric into the slots over the base. Here best is to use something moderately sharp like knitting needle or some thick needle. First you just need to tuck the fabric along all sides of this section. After everything is ready, I'm cutting off the excess fabric, leaving about 3 mm of fabric around the edge. And then I'm tucking this excess fabric into the slots, finishing out this section. After that, I'm covering with glue the next section of the base and repeating everything, attaching the fabric taking it into the slots along the edge cutting off the excess leaving a small allowance and then tucking in this allowance fabric completely I love this technique very much it's called kimikomi it's from Japan. I have already made Christmas bubble using this technique. It's very quick and simple, literally takes about 15 minutes and it looks incredible. By the way, you don't have to use velvet like me, any fabrics will work just as well here. And you can use even tiniest scraps for this purpose. So I'm covering the entire back sides of the fruit in velvet, I've made three darker sections and the rest I've made lighter. After the entire back side is ready, I'm moving to the flat front side. It's the same here, but I'm using cream silk fabric. First, I'm covering the flat part of the edging. I've divided this section in half at the top, so that it was easier to work with. And 
and then I'm filling the middle. I'm applying a good amount of glue here and attaching the fabric, then I'm pressing it really well to the surface and I'm holding the attached fabric with my finger while tucking it in, otherwise the fabric would stretch and the texture won't be seen well. Next I'm gonna make seeds and pulp. I wanted to decorate the fruit with beads, but wasn't sure how I could attach it to the fabric. Embroidering the fabric with beads is very time consuming, so first I decided to attach the beads with pins. But I quickly ran out of beans and my beads didn't look at all the way they should. So I went to the bead store and there I bought pink buggles, a kind of long tube beads, which were perfect for making pulp. And I decided to glue these buggles to the base. So I'm pulling out all the pins, leaving only the reddish brown seed beads. And I've decided to use epoxy glue to hold the buggles. So I'm mixing a small amount of glue as per instructions, equal parts of components A and B, applying glue to the surface of the fruit and pouring buggles into it. After that I'm adjusting the placement of the buggles with a stick. Here I wanted the buggles to radiate from the center like rays, like over a real thick pulp. I have 5 minute epoxy glue, so I'm filling the surface in several steps in order to have time to adjust the buggle placement before the glue sets. Here and there I'm adding more brown seed beads, it turns out very nice and is really looking like the middle of a fig, exactly what I wanted to get. Well, and now for the final touch. I'm decorating the fig with some golden thread along the edge. This is gim or spun gold here. This material is new to me. I saw it in the store and decided to try it. It's looking really nice, although a little bit difficult to work with without any experience, as it bends and stretches easily. Instead of gimp, you can use some gold thread. It turned out to be an incredibly appetizing fig, the buggles were just perfect for imitating the pulp, I think I even wasn't able to catch with my camera how beautifully the beads shine in the light. You can make a green fig as well, it will look gorgeous in fall arrangements and in order to hang it over Christmas tree you'll just have to add a tie. For the first ornament it will be a pomegranate, a template is required. I made six pieces from wine-colored velvet. And I'm also cutting out a small pink flower, this is the inner part of the pomegranate crown. By the way, it's better to make it from fabric that doesn't fray much, otherwise it will not be possible to turn it inside out safely. To make the fabric even less frayed, I cinched the edges of the pieces, I have a synthetic fabric, so this was possible. Then we'll have to sew a little, I'm folding the flower with one of the main wine colored pieces, wrong sides out and sewing a small petal along the contour. Then I'm folding the next wine colored piece with a petal and sewing the second petal along the contour. Then the third one and so on until I've got all six petals sewn. After everything is ready I'm turning all the petals inside out, helping myself with a thin stick. The resultant crown doesn't hold its shape, so I'm making a frame. I'm bending a flower out of thin wire following the shape of the template. 
By the way, you'll find all the templates in the description box below the video, as usual. I'm bending the wire flower petals, making a crown. And I'm inserting this crown into the fabric flower. Now let's make the fruit body. I'm using a 5 inch foam ball as a base. If you look at a real pomegranate, you'll see that it's not round, but has a little bit of an angular shape, it has some kind of flat sides. So I'm dividing the ball into six sections, just like I did with the fig, and then cutting off a part of each section. To make the shape even more natural looking, you can also cut off the top of the ball first, because a real pomegranate is flattened a little from above. I'm also rolling the base on the table to crumple the foam a bit and to make all the edges more rounded. Then I'm making a cutout at one section of the fruit. I'm drawing a kind of squiggle, cutting it along the contour about a quarter of an inch in depth and picking out the top layer of foam using the tip of a box knife to make an indentation, again like I did with the fig. And I'm finishing preparing the base by cutting through all the markings in order to tuck the fabric there. Next, I'm putting the crown over the top of the base and placing the fabric parts to fit the marked sections over the base. And then I'm making it just the same as I did with the fig. I'm applying some glue, tacking the fabric in the slots. Here I left a good spare of the fabric as I was afraid that there might not be enough, so I'm now cutting off the excess. And finally, I'm tucking the fabric along the edge of the section completely. I'm covering all the slices like this with fabric, except for the one where I made the indentation. I'm dividing this section into upper and lower parts. I'm making a cut along the contour as usual. Then I'm cutting off the excess fabric and filling the upper part first. and then the lower part. All that is left is to cover the indentation. Here I'm using cream silk and I'm doing the same as with the thick. I'm covering the surface well with glue, applying the fabric and pressing it well so that it repeats the texture. And then I'm tucking the fabric along the edge, holding it with my finger while doing so to avoid the fabric stretching. I didn't really like that the tips of the crown of the pomegranate turned out to be not quite pointed, I wanted to highlight them a bit. So I'm adding some gimp along the contour and stitching it over the crown. Since gimp is a kind of wire, you can easily squeeze it with your fingers at the tip of the petal and you will get a very nice pointed tip. And here I wanted to advise you to do this when you have just sewn the crown and put the frame inside and haven't yet applied the fabric onto the base. It was very difficult to operate with the needle and because of this my embroidery is not as good as it should be. And by the way, I want to offer you a very simple and fast option which I remembered only during video editing – contour paints. They are great for such ornaments and drawing the outline line is much faster than embroidering. 
I'm also trimming the edge of the indentation with a thread. I'm trying to place the thread as intricately as possible with many bands and curves so that it looks more like a torn edge. And then I needed pomegranate seeds. I didn't find anything in the bead shop. And then I remembered that just the other day my mother was sorting things out and found an old garnet leg necklace and gave it to me for crafts. So I'm using garnet beads here. I'm attaching the beads with pins, as at first I did over the fig, and I'm tinting the pins with burgundy glass paint. I'm also painting the beads a little to make them a bit brighter. You can also use transparent red nail polish for this purpose. I'm waiting for the paint to dry and then covering the white base with pomegranate beads. Perfect match! I'll also add a small branch with leaves here. I'm cutting the leaves out of green cotton. They are of a very simple shape and each leaf consists of two identical parts. Here again you'll have to saw a little. First I'm hemming the edge of each leaf. I also decided to decorate the leaves with gold, so I'm embroidering the central vein out of a piece of gimp. And then I'm sewing on small pieces of gimp to get lateral veins. After both leaves are embroidered, I'm folding them together to make a double-sided leaf and sewing both parts by hand. After the leaf is ready, I'm embroidering it with gimp along the contour. Here I made three leaves like this. I also had beautiful metal twigs on hand. You can also make a twig out of wire and wrap it in ribbons as I did with the grapes. And then I'm sewing the leaves to the loops over the twig. Finally, I'm attaching the twig to the pomegranate. To, the, to do this, I'm making kind of a hair pin out of strong wire and I'm sticking this hair pin deep into the pomegranate. The pomegranate is definitely the star of today's collection, although I love all the three ornaments. The seeds turned out to be very real looking and I like how the uneven texture looks under the fabric where the pomegranate was supposedly peeled off. You can also make a half of the fruit, as I did half of the fig, to get a beautiful set. And all the three fruits go well together, so they're suitable for fall arrangements and, of course, for a Christmas tree. Such ornaments made of fabrics with beads and gold look just great over a tree, very stylish and expensive. I'm thinking of making oranges using this technique now. So let me know what you think of today's ornaments down below. Thanks for watching the video, we'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye!